Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com. Um, we know that when people start trading, it can be quite daunting. What markets do you watch? What techniques do you use? How much risk should you be taking? So we thought what we would do is put together a series of questions in these videos, common questions that our clients ask, and also questions from somebody new to trading, Drew, uh, one of my colleagues at Capital.com. So stuff that he'd like to know as well and do this video as a Q&A session. Of course, if you have further questions that we've missed out, just leave it in the comments below. I do read all of them and I will get back uh, and answer them. But let's kick this Q&A session off by handing over to Drew and starting off with question number one. Thank you, David. I hear a lot of people talk about trading and you hear it everywhere, but what actually is trading? So I suppose the flippant answer to what is trading. Um, if you're familiar with investing, it's like that, but just a lot quicker. You know, typically traders are looking for shorter term moves in the market and shorter ranges. They might be looking at the next few minutes, next few hours, next few days, maybe even the next few weeks. But it's just looking at that shorter time frame for a market and trying to profit from the various short term swings in a market. I hear about loads of markets. But what markets do people actually trade? What ones are popular? The last 10 years have seen real growth in the popularity of foreign exchange markets. So things like pound, US dollar, euro dollar, uh, dollar against the Japanese yen, those sort of things. So they're really popular because again, they tend to be pretty volatile. We get some decent moves. Then there are markets that people are familiar with. So if they're coming from an investing background, they might start looking at the likes of the, the Dow Jones, the major US index, the DAX, the German index, the FTSE 100, in the UK, uh, that's stock market index. So, so stock market indices are popular as well. And then we have commodity markets. The two most popular are uh, gold, because again, I think it's a market that plenty of us are familiar with. And also the price of oil, because again, with oil, we can have massive volatility, big trends, and it's this sort of thing that does appeal to traders. You go online, you get bombarded with all the terminology. There are options, futures, CFDs. What financial products do people use to trade? There's a whole host of financial products um, available. You know, like you said, futures, options, and maybe more traditional markets, contracts for different CFDs. Uh, they've become very popular with uh, sort of private retail traders over the last 20 years. They, they give you leverage. Uh, it's very easy to buy and sell various different markets. So, so for us, for our business, contracts for different CFDs is what you trade. I've heard of the idea of leverage, where you can get greater exposure for your money. But is that right? What is leverage? How does it work? It's really important to understand how leverage works. And, and it is pretty straightforward. It, it gives you more bang for your buck. So for example, if you had an account where you had five times leverage on an individual stock, you could buy, for example, um, $10,000 worth of Google and only tie up $2,000. That's your initial margin requirement. So you're leveraging your $2,000 to have a $10,000 position. If you wanted to buy $10,000 of Google stock through a normal stockbroker, you'd normally have to put up $10,000. But with, with contracts for difference and other products, this is how leverage works. So a small sum of money can control a much bigger financial position. And of course, there are risks and rewards associated with that. I'm borrowing money to trades. What are the risks involved with that? It sounds risky because it is more risky, in all honesty. You know, if you're only putting down a small portion of the overall position, let's go to our 2,000 uh, deposit, 10,000 position in Google example. If Google drops 10%, that's 10% of your $10,000. You're going to lose $1,000 on that trade, and you've only put up $2,000 in the first place. So clearly, you do have more risk, which is why it's important to look at things such as stop losses, Think about how big you're trading and don't use leverage just as an excuse to, to overstretch yourself. You know, the reason that people use leverage is they're trying to have a bigger position to take advantage of a shorter term move and maybe a smaller move, but don't move it, don't use it to overstretch and risk everything that's in your account. Use sensibly, it can be a very effective tool for traders. So I was on the platform the other day and I see the price going up and down, big swings. But what I want to know is what actually moves markets? Some people may think that's a stupid question, but it's not a stupid question. You know, markets move around 
all the time. And there are various factors. Ultimately, it boils down to the action between buyers and sellers. You know, if we see, let's take an extreme example. Bitcoin uh, in the last three months of uh, 2017, we saw the market go almost parabolic. And that's because there were lots and lots of buyers. Everyone wanted in on the, on the cryptocurrency bubble. So we saw more and more buying, fueling higher, higher prices, you know, but typically day to day, markets are moving around because of this, this battle between buyers and sellers trying to find value. And there's lots of things that will influence them. Of course, shock news events might come out if a company ends up delivering much lower profits than expected, that is going to have an impact uh, on its share price. There might not be any buyers until it's fallen 10%. Okay, so it's this interaction between buyers and sellers, how they're reacting to the news and decisions by you know, central banks like the Bank of England, the European Central Bank, all of this sort of stuff is what's moving markets around during the day. I came across the idea of a stop loss the other day. Can you tell me exactly what that is and how it works? A stop loss is a really effective way of managing risk. Um, Let's work through an example. Let's say you buy a market that's trading at 500 and you think the market is going to go to 600 over the next month, but you want to manage your risk. You think, well, if the market drops um, 5%, if it drops from 500 to 475, I want to get out. So you, when you place the trade, you can place what's known as a stop loss order at 475. That way you don't need to sit there and watch the market. You know, you can sit there and you know if the market sells off, and triggers your stop, then it will turn into a sell order. So a stop loss order is a way of trying to minimize and control the risk on an open trade. So it's a very basic but very effective form of risk management when it comes to trading. Okay, I understand what a stop loss is now, but how does a take profit order work? A take profit order uh, is the, basically the flip side of, a, of our stop loss order. Let's say, again, let's say you buy something at 500, you think it's going to go to, to 600. You know, if you want to, you can place an order that takes profits at 600. So again, you don't need to be watching the market minute by minute, day by day if you don't want to. You know, you bought it at 500 and you set an order that just sits there. And if the market trades up to your level, your order will get executed and you will book your profit. So using uh, limit orders, which is what they're known as, take profit orders or stop losses, it's a way of maybe automating the exit of your trade, either for a manageable loss or hopefully for a profit. I've started looking at markets and there are so many. How do you spot a good opportunity to trade? That's really the $100 million question, isn't it? How do you spot a good opportunity to trade? Um, it's not easy, but I think maybe the sensible way, if you're just starting out, don't try and trade everything. Don't try and follow 25 different markets. You know, I think there is enough that goes on week to week in markets such as euro against the dollar, uh, the Dow Jones index, the price of oil. You only have to follow you know, maybe just one market, you know, just to get a feel for how that market moves and um, where you think the opportunities could be. So I think there is definitely a learning curve in the beginning, uh, but don't stretch yourself too thin. I think, first of all, focus on a small number of markets, maybe even just one, and get a feel for how that market moves and uh, think about where the opportunities might be in terms of the trends, recent trends in the market, trends in the time frame you're trying to trade, where you'd put your stop loss, and how it performs around previous highs and lows. And then hopefully you'll start getting more, for a, more of a feel for the possible movements in the future for that market. I'm new to trading. I've done a lot of research about many different trading strategies, but I'm a little bit confused. What's a good trading strategy for beginners? I think the best advice I could give to beginners is keep it simple. And I think this is advice that people who've been trading for many years uh, would also stress. I think the temptation in the beginning, there's, there's so much to follow. There's news, there's company announcements, uh, there's major economic changes. There's, then you start looking at charts, there are candle charts, bar charts, line charts. There's a hundred different indicators. And I think the problem is, in the beginning, the temptation is definitely there to make it much more complicated than it has to be. So I'd say start off with a simple approach. Look at things like previous highs, previous lows, the trend. Again, we've done quite a few videos on this sort of stuff. You can find them on our channel. So I think to start off with uh, your, your trading strategy, you should be able to boil it down to a few lines. It doesn't need to be uh, the size of an encyclopedia to decide whether or not you want to buy or sell. Keep it simple. I'm familiar with the idea of buying low and selling high, 
But is there any way to make money from a falling market? I think plenty of people think that, that trading is about buying low and selling high. And of course, that is half the equation. The other half is that you can actually make money when markets are falling. You know, if you think, if you see a market uh, that's overvalued, let's say when oil was uh, $75 a barrel uh, in, in October 2018, and you thought this is far too high for oil. If you think it's going to slide, it did end up sliding an awful lot after that, you can sell short. So when trading using products such as contracts, for difference, you can trade markets in both directions. You're not just tied to buying first and hoping a market rises. If you think a market's overvalued, you can sell first to open your position and profit from, hopefully profit from the market sliding. So that's short selling. I often hear about people losing money when trading, but in your opinion, what's the number one biggest trading mistake? I think there are lots of um, obvious mistakes in hindsight that we all make at the beginning, but I think maybe the biggest one is where losses end up being bigger than profits. So for example, you know, if, you're, if you're a typical trader just starting out, uh, his average losing trade, when he's wrong, uh, he or she loses £100, and when they're right, he or she makes £50. You can see there's a massive imbalance there, but I think this is a common approach for many people in the beginning. And I think what we have to do is, is try and turn on, head, on its head. We need to try and aim to do trades where our potential profit is a multiple of um, our potential loss. So if we're, if we're taking on a trade with a risk of, let's say, £100 if we're wrong, there should be a multiple of that, 200 300 maybe even more in terms of profit if we're right. So it's making trades where the odds are more stacked in our favour. But I think that the common problem, major problem, is that for most people, in the beginning at least, losses tend to be much bigger than their profits. Ah, so that's a common trading mistake. What can I do to prevent that? We've done a series of videos uh, on these biases and you can find these uh, on our channel. But I think, I think it's first of all, it, it's having a plan and thinking, well, I'll only trade when I've got a uh, potential reward much bigger uh, than my risk. I'll put things like trend lines on my chart so I know which way the trend is. I'm not allowed to trade against it. I'll think about how much financial risk I'm taking on each trade in relation to the size of my account. So there are small steps uh, that we can do just to maybe take more control of our trading and make sure we're not trading too emotionally and effectively just gambling and taking silly risks. I'm really interested in the idea of trading mistakes. Can you tell me a few more common ones that people make? There are lots of other common mistakes as well. I think um, probably one of the next most common is the inability to trade with a trend. And I think it's something we're all guilty of from time to time. We see a market that's rising, 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 think it can't go any higher, try and sell into that market only to see it push higher still. And of course, the flip side applies. If a market's falling, uh, the temptation is always there to try and catch a falling knife, you know, try and call the bottom of a market, uh, we get stopped out. Plenty of people say that psychology plays a big part in trading. What's your take on that? Psychology plays a massive part in trading. I think much bigger than any of us think when we first start doing it. You know, if you think about it, we all look at the same markets, the same news, the same prices, uh, but ultimately we, we have markets because there's a difference of opinion. We have buyers and sellers. We have people who think that Bitcoin at, at 5,000 is too cheap, and then people who think it's too expensive. We have people who think gold at 1,300 is a bargain. Other people think it's just going to go sliding and, and fall off a cliff. So I think it's this difference of opinion, and our own psychology plays a massive part, particularly when it comes to profits uh, and losses. You know, I said a bit earlier on, plenty of people end up uh, having losses much bigger than their profits. And this is human psychology playing out yet again, you know, they see a market that's moving against them, they're losing money, and they want to stick their head in the sand in the hope the market will come back, you know, but they end up racking up a much bigger loss than they were planning on. And the flip side, they have a small profit, they see the market come back a little bit, they panic and they snatch at that smaller profit rather than giving the market time to continue to move in their favor. So psychology, I think, is by far and away the biggest determinant factor uh, as to whether we're going to be profitable or not. That's it for our first Q&A session. Uh, I hope you found it useful. We'll be doing plenty more of these in the future. If you have any more questions, um, just leave us a message down below in the comments. I will be reading them all and I'll try and uh, answer them uh, within a day of you putting them down there. We are going to do more of these. So if you'd like uh, subjects to be covered, again, leave those down there 
uh, in the comments and we'll put some uh, new sessions together uh, in the new year. Don't forget there's a whole host of other content uh, when it comes to trading on our YouTube channel so, so take a look at all of that and finally uh, to have access to our trading platform to track these markets and try testing out your own trading strategies. If you go to our website capital.com you can open up um, a real account, open up a demo account, see the markets uh, that we cover and get started in trading. Um, but for this we will wrap things up there. So from me, David Jones, Drew and capital.com, good luck with your trading. <laughs>